Are you trying to decide if and when to take the COVID-19 vaccine? Do the potentially hazardous chemicals in vaccines like aluminum and mercury put you off from taking the vaccine at all? Well, if that's the case, stick around because in this video, I'm going to be sharing what my personal research says about heavy metal toxicity in the COVID-19 vaccines. Firstly, this video does not intend to provide medical advice of any kind. I am not a doctor, and I am not the most authoritative person on the matter of COVID-19 vaccines. My intention is just to share with you the concerns that I have, and also the insights that I gathered during my own personal research as somebody who is suspect of conventional medicine and also has a genetic mutation, the MTHFR mutation, which makes it difficult for me to detox heavy metals. So I'm especially concerned about the heavy metal contents of vaccines. So if you're uh, an adult in the US, by now you're confronted with the question of if and when should you take the COVID-19 vaccine? I personally have an appointment already set for April for the Pfizer vaccine. And, um, but you know, in the meantime, I still wanna be doing my research. And the two top questions that I have are, number one, does the, do the COVID-19 vaccines have heavy metals in them? Um, I have an MTHFR gene mutation. So this is gonna mean I might need to um, have a specific protocol afterwards to excrete those heavy metals, or I may need to avoid the vaccine altogether. The second concern was um, around antibodies. So should you take the vaccine if you have, if you are positive for antibodies still? I had COVID in January of 2021, and currently I still have antibodies. So I want to know if my reaction is going to be more severe because of the presence of those antibodies. So there's a lot of information online around you know, the motives behind those creating and distributing the vaccines, the corporate interest involved, etc. I'm not going to touch on that in this video, but I do have a couple concerns going into my research around the COVID-19 vaccines. The first one is around the FDA emergency authorization. So this is not an FDA approved vaccine. Um, they don't try and tell you that it is. And so as such, it just hasn't gone um, through such rigorous trials. I'm sure we will get there at some point, but as of right now, um, it is um, pretty much a, a relatively untested vaccine, okay? So given my experience with COVID, which was pretty much a two-day fever, um, I, I've definitely had some hesitations around, do I wanna take something that is gonna potentially make me feel worse or maybe even have long-term side effects? So I definitely had that fear. So my second concern was around something called Tamarisol. And tamarisol is a mercury-containing compound, specifically with um, ethyl mercury rather than the methyl mercury found in fish, that is used as a preservative. It prevents bacteria overgrowth and fungus overgrowth within the vaccines. And so this has been implicated in autism and other neurological disorders in children. Um, but you know the CDC, FDA all say that the amounts found in the vaccine are kind of banal. They don't really cause any of these issues and they're perfectly safe. On the flip side, um, mercury has been removed or has been, has been phased out from most vaccines now. That's an interesting coincidence. First they said it's safe and then they also went ahead and phased it out. If you follow you know, any like functional medicine related content, you know that mercury is a neurotoxin and avoiding mercury is extremely important. Um, it's difficult to take out. And so as I was approaching my vaccine research, really trying to understand if there's mercury in the vaccine was top of mind for me. Okay, and the third um, concern was around aluminum. So aluminum is used as a vaccine adjuvant. I'm not sure if I'm even saying that correctly, but basically what it means is um, the aluminum salt helps um, elicit a stronger immune response from your body. And so the CDC says that vaccines with um, adjuvants basically results in more kind of local symptoms like swelling, redness, things like that, and then also more systemic symptoms, including body aches, chills, etc. And I guess the goal of these is to um, in increase the number of antibodies and your immune immunity towards the virus. Um, that being said, you know, aluminum is a, is a heavy metal. It can be very toxic, even though it's uh, quite ubiquitous and one of the most common elements. Um, so it's definitely not something I'd want to willingly consume if possible. Okay, so does the Pfizer, Moderna, or the Johnson & Johnson vaccine have tamarisol, mercury, or aluminum in it? And fortunately, the answer is a resounding no. 
All right, so this is great news. Um, and the reason that there, one of the telltale signs rather, that there um, wasn't any tamarisol, mercury, aluminum, et cetera, in the vaccines was that um, they had to be preserved at such a cold temperature. So the Pfizer one in particular has to be preserved at negative 99 degrees um, Fahrenheit. And so as a result, there's some doses being thrown away. However, it does assuage the concerns of a lot of consumers that are concerned about the safety of these vaccines. Um, you know, the, the purpose of this video wasn't really to go into the nitty gritty details of, you know, the differences between, let's say, Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson. I actually linked to a podcast in the description where you could, um, if you have an hour, you can listen to a great functional medicine practitioner talk about, go through the, all the fact sheets and kind of walk you through all the different chemicals um, in there and all the ingredients. Um, that being said, just at a high level, you know, Pfizer, Moderna, um, they're both using the same mRNA kind of lipid delivery system and you're just, you know, triggering um, a spike protein and then your um, body's creating antibodies in response to that spike protein. Um, there is no virus in there. There's no attenuated or dead virus. Uh, whereas with the Johnson & Johnson, um, it is going to be a slightly different mechanism um, than the mRNA. And, you know, I'm not going to kind of go into the details of which one's better or not. Um, you can go and do that research for yourself. But as far as this video is concerned, if you were concerned about heavy metals specifically in the vaccine, um, I've done my research as somebody really sensitive to heavy metal toxicity, the MTHFR C677T homozygous. And I can tell you that um, I feel pretty safe um, going into this, at least from a heavy metals perspective, um, going ahead and at least considering taking the vaccine and for now probably leaning towards taking the vaccine and um, I will share my experience in the future. Um, I've linked to a lot of you know articles that I've read throughout my research and I hope that these are uh, beneficial to you. This is kind of a short and not a very structured video so I hope you got some benefit out of it and if you got value from this video and you want to continue uh, with me on this journey to learn how to master your mind, body, and emotions so that you could live out your life purpose, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, um, smash that like button, and I will see you in the next episode.